Hola, hola, Connecticut Cold members. Jensen Sierra Lambert here again with more useful tips on how to prepare your students for the upcoming AP Spanish Language and Culture exam. Um, we're, we're less than a week away from the big day, but they still have a few days to learn a few tips, learn a few strategies on how to complete each and every section of the exam. Today, we're gonna to focus on the in interpersonal speaking task, the conversation, la conversación, which is the second to last task they complete before they walk out the door. La conversación, though is short, it's worth just as much as the other sections in the free response. So it's just as important. So let me go ahead and share my screen so we can start going over those strategies. Okay. All right. So the conversation, what is it? Um, first, they get a few minutes to read the instructions. This is part of the instructions. Um, and they get an introduction, which I'll show you later on, the context of the conversation. They also get a summary um, of the script. And though it doesn't have precisely the words they'll hear, it does explain the, the, the function, the purpose of each of the comments made during the conversation and what they need to respond with. You'll see that in just a minute. Um, so one thing I like to do with my students um, to prepare them for the conversation is to have them practice improvised conversations um, in any given context. So for example, here we, we have this image um, of two very happy ladies um, sharing a, a mate, we can see that, um, and they're, you know, sitting uh, somewhere on a pier somewhere, having a great conversation, telling jokes, maybe uh, catching up on gossip, who knows, right? So I asked my students to imagine what these two um, women could possibly be talking about. And based on this context, right, we practice an improvised conversation. So that's one exercise that you can still do uh, with your students before the exam. We still have a few days. And I have an entire PowerPoint with many images of two people having a conversation either at a restaurant or the gym, different context. So if you would like to have that PowerPoint, just email me. I'll give you my email at the end of the presentation and you can practice those. So the best way to prepare for the conversation is to have many improvised conversations in class. Um, that's my recommendation. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> here we have an example of a conversation. El tema curricular, las familias y las comunidades. And the introduction says, um, esta es una conversación con Eduardo, un miembro del Centro Comunitario de Tu Vecindario. Vas a participar en esta conversación porque a Eduardo le gustaría saber tu opinión y recomendaciones sobre un evento benéfico para la Liga Juvenil de Fútbol. So over the last few videos, um, I've been repeating and repeating, encourage your students to look at the introductions for each of the tasks. Why? Because you get clues as to what the conversation or the audio will be about. And chances are they will, you know, they will hear one, two or three words they won't understand, um, but they could still respond and engage based on the context that they were provided, right? They can guess, um, make an educated guess about what they heard, the questions, the comments, and then respond based on the context that they have. So um, what's important here? So es un evento benéfico, right? A Eduardo le gustaría saber tu opinión y recomendaciones sobre un evento benéfico. So what I would ask my students to do is to also think about the type of vocabulary, grammar stu structures they would need to engage in this conversation, right? So it says here that Eduardo would like your opinion, would like recommendations. So I have my students write um, the beginning of a few phrases, possible phrases they could use, like, te recomiendo que, 
So you know you're going to need the subjunctive here. Um, es importante que, you know you're going to use the subjunctive there. So use, they can use those two minutes they have to prepare to anticipate the vocabulary and the grammar structures they may need to engage in this conversation and to maintain the exchange, right? Um, um, let's continue here. So back to this introduction here, I just wanted to point out that though they have a minute to read this part, this introduction, this in set of instructions rather, it's not the introduction, it's a set of instructions for task three. Um, I ask my students to skip this part and to go straight to the introduction that explains the context and also to look at the summarized um, sort of script. They don't need to read what's here because they already know what the task is about, right? This is for someone who has no clue what this task is. So I have them apply this one minute they have here I have my students apply it to this section here, right? So here's another conversation. Esta es una conversación con Marta, una amiga del Centro Comunitario Hispano. Vas a participar en esta conversación porque están trabajando en un proyecto para crear un mural que represente a personas famosas del mundo hispanohablante. This is actually the conversation from the 2019 AP exam. Um, and it's and it's I got this off of the college board. You know, you can find um, other uh, exams, previous exams there available if you if you want to do a practice exam with your students last minute. So <clears throat> what I have my students look at is here you have un centro comunitario, right? So I have them quickly think about what's a community center, what does it look like, what what do people do there, what's it for what type of activities take place, right? So they can imagine the context y para que se ubiquen, right? I want them to uh, see themselves in that community center um, and see what's going on around the community center because I will give them ideas of what lies to tell Marta. And I say that because sometimes, you know, you engage in conversations about, topics that may not necessarily apply to you. So I tell my students to simply um, lie because what's being assessed here is their ability to maintain an exchange, right? Not a single AP reader is going to call home or the school to make sure that what each student is saying um, is it's what they do um, in reality. Okay, so Tenemos el centro comunitario underlined, and then we have un proyecto para crear un mural, right? So immediately they need to think about, okay, this is, an, this is art. We're creating art. It's a mural, right? So maybe they got to see the murals of Diego Rivera in your classroom, or um, maybe you covered, you did a unit on street art and graffiti, which also, you know, could be... Um, considered a mural. And here, um, what they're looking to do is to create a mural con una persona famosa del mundo hispanohablante. Right. So the next list or the next uh, set of notes they need to have in all these white spaces around uh, el esquema in the introduction is a list of Personas famosas del mundo hispanohablante. Who comes, who comes uh, to your mind right now? Okay. Lionel Messi just won the World Cup. Eh, Frida Kahlo. Eh, mm, eh, quizá eh, Pablo Picasso. Rigoberta Menchú. Here, they have a variety. They have the option to choose whomever they want, right? So naturally, students will think about um, personalities, uh, people, personajes históricos or héroes de la comunidad that you covered in your class during your lessons. So they should have those written down on the paper because, you know, we can anticipate, we can assume that Marta is probably going to ask you, right, about, you know, who do you, who do you think should be on this mural? 
right? And she's probably going to ask why, right? So we can anticipate that and start writing things down. Um, the other thing they should do after they analyze the introduction is um, carefully look at each of the prompts here, right? If you look at number one, te saluda y te hace una pregunta. So that's, um, that's the initial greeting. Res responde y explica por qué is what the students must do. Whenever it says explica por qué, that's keyword for elaboration, right? So the task uh, the on the rubric, on the AP rubric for this particular task, in addition to being able to maintain the exchange, they should also, they also need to demonstrate that they're capable of elaborating, right, when they answer a question. So it should not only be sí si, or no, o sí, si, lo tengo, o no, no lo tengo, sí, si me gusta, o no me gusta. They should able to elab elaborate as to why, right, and go on and on and on until the beep goes off. So for each of these turns, they have 20 seconds to respond. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you don't have um, much to say about a particular topic, 20 seconds can feel like an hour, right? So we need to be creative. And, and like I said earlier, decir muchas mentiras right? Just lie, lie, lie. Oh, yes, yes. Last summer, um, I I went to a museum with my brother. Fui a un museo con mi hermano y vimos murales de Diego Rivera. You know, even if that's not true, um, that's a way to elaborate and really fill those 20 seconds. Okay, so Responde y explica por qué. La conversación continúa. She te hace una pregunta. Responde con detalles. Again, more elaboration. Te hace una pregunta. And then rechaza la sugerencia, right? That word rechaza is super, super important, right? Because when um, turn number three comes along, no matter what Marta is asking, the student needs to decline or say no, right? Whatever question they hear, they need to say no. So I can tell you for this particular audio, if you look on, if you just Google AP Spanish Lang free response 2019, the audio for this particular conversation will pull up, right? So the question that you'll hear here, I'm not going to play it on this video because I know, you know, you can you can go find it very easily. But the question that Marta asks, um, she would like to know where in the community center or near the community, near the community, where would it be a good place to have this mural with this person that you suggested is the best person to have on the mural, right? So the students need to say, no. Nah, well, actually, you know what? I take that back. I take that back. In this particular uh, turn, um, she'll, she'll suggest. I'm sorry about that. She makes a suggestion. She says, what if we put this mural? ¿Por qué no ponemos este mural um, en el edificio municipal? Right? And no matter what she says, you want your students to respond with a no. No, no pienso que es una buena idea, right? I don't think that's a good idea. However, te recomiendo que pongamos el mural eh, en la cafetería del centro comunitario, um, en el campo de fútbol, quizá, o cerca del campo de fútbol. And immediately after that, they need to explain why, right? Bueno, um, cerca del campo de fútbol, eh, porque... Messi es una persona muy inspiradora eh, para los jóvenes y sería una buena idea poner, crear un mural sobre Messi. Por ejemplo, if that's the person that your students suggest should be on the mural. So anyway, so it goes, it keeps going back and forth, back and forth. So it is very important that they pay attention to each of the prompts, you know, whether they need to say no, they need to say yes. Responde afirmativamente, responde negativamente. Um, 
at the end of the conversation, um, although here says responde con detalles, students should be ready with a goodbye, right? And sometimes it needs to be more than just hasta luego. Um, because sometimes the prompt here is simply despídete, say goodbye. Um, they don't have to do anything else, right? Well, yeah, we can say goodbye in three seconds, hasta luego, or you can really slow it down, hasta luego. <laughs> but then it would sound really weird. So they need to have something else to say. Por ejemplo, hasta luego. Eh, me gustó mucho hablar contigo. ¿Por qué no vamos a tomarnos un cafecito mañana en Starbucks, right? And they can have that ready. Um, and, you know, they can have some sort of uh, elaborate goodbye that works for just about any conversation, any exchange, right? So encourage them to have that ready. Okay, so um, let's see. A couple of other things that I wanted to go over. Okay, here are other ways to say... Um, to decline a suggestion or a recommendation um, or an invitation, no? Disculpa, pero no puedo, no tengo tiempo esta semana. Desafortunadamente, they should respond, decline that invite or suggestion or recommendation immediately, right? So we can provide them with a list of, you know, phrases that you can use for this type of situation, see? Okay, so let's see. I think I've covered it all, but um, let me give you um, a couple of phrases that I've used with my students um, to end the conversation. Uh, si, responde a la pregunta y despídete. So it'll say this. So one way to say goodbye would be, gracias por la oportunidad, gracias por la invitación, eh, gracias por la ayuda. Eh, ha sido un placer charlar contigo, or simply, even more informal, me gustó mucho charlar contigo, me gustó mucho hablar contigo, qué interesante fue esta conversación, um, or nos vemos el domingo en el café, o nos vemos en la escuela mañana, nos vemos en la casa de Ramiro, y continuamos la conversación. So that type of goodbye, right? That would work for just about any conversation. All right, so I think... This is all. Um, if you have any questions about the conversation um, or if you would like resources, uh, packets with a list of vocabulary words, useful phrases that work for any given situation, just reach out to me. I'm happy to share those resources with you as well as the PowerPoint that I was just showing you. This is actually the PowerPoint that I use in class to teach the conversation to my students. My email is ylambert at gfacademy.org. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. So I wish you all and your students good luck on the exam next week. Si se puede, si se puede. Let's go for that five and get that seal of biliteracy. See, si? adios y muchas gracias.